Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the use of uh, data science in the development studies. Well, development studies is an interdisciplinary area. Uh, it's an intersection of uh, development economics, uh, technology, social, other social sciences, and so on. So we will talk about how uh, data and data science is being used uh, in this sector. Well, it has been an academic discipline for a very long time now, uh, but more recently, uh, data and data science has been used uh, in this sector and we'll see actually how, you know, transformations uh, have been made by using uh, data science. Well, it's a very uh, complex area. The problems in this sector, in this particular field, uh, are fairly complex because uh, alleviating poverty requires attention from government, from researcher, from technology professionals, from uh, many other parties. So it's very difficult to sort of solve these problems because these are practical problems, not just academic problems where you take data, you know, and then analyze it, write a research paper and publish. That's not what development studies is all about. In development studies, what's important is, is about getting feedback actually, right? Whether something works or not. That's very challenging because in most other areas of social sciences, uh, there is no feedback uh, because application part is often uh, overlooked. But in development studies, what's very important is whether the research uh, outcome is actually working out or not. And hence, it's very, very important for the researchers to be practical, but also to be very, very um, updated with the, the more recent developments uh, to sort of improve his or her research. And we will see some of these, uh, you know, more recent developments uh, in this particular area. Well, the challenges in this particular uh, discipline is that collecting data is very, very difficult. Uh, why? Because uh, you have to go to uh, the remote places of uh, the developing countries in order to collect the data. And that is always a challenge because you don't have people who are willing to do that because the conditions uh, in these places are precarious, very difficult. Hence, you don't get really, you know, high qualified professionals to go out and collect data. And then second one is authenticate, authenticity of the data. Uh, right. Oftentimes what researchers do is that they employ uh, third parties or they outsource this work of data collection to third parties and they don't really do a good job. So it's difficult to really trust the data that um, you get from these, uh, you know, uh, third parties who are not directly involved in research. The only thing they do is collect data from the remote places. The problems in this sector are pretty uh, specific, okay, very idiosyncratic in nature. Why? Because the the poverty issue, let's say in some uh, country in the Africa, would be totally different from let's say some country in the Asia. Okay, so the problems are very specific, very idiosyncratic. So you can't really use data from one country to solve problems in some other country. It has to be very um, tailored made for that particular country because the culture differs, the way of uh, lifestyle and everything differs a lot. Hence, it's very important that you collect data uh, from that particular country where you want to solve a given uh, problem. Okay, so these are some of the challenges. Well, the first three are basically related to getting good data. And then uh, ideal metrics for measurement. Uh, well, it's uh, a debate for a very long time that what is the correct metrics for uh, measuring the uh, development in different, uh, you know, in um, in this particular sector, you know, um, well, GDP or unemployment rate or average per capita income, these are some of the metrics uh, often been used for measuring the, uh, in, you know, the development in the um, underdeveloped areas in the world. But what's more often, uh, what is now being given more importance is the um, other indices, for example, HDI, Human Development Index, right? Uh, and all the other sort of indexes, which are not just measuring the economic development, but also social development, uh, happiness, uh, and so on and so forth. 
All right. So um, now data is being a lot of importance. Uh, research is now more data driven. In past, like before 30, 40 years back, uh, research and development sector used to be more opinion oriented. People will simply make, uh, make opinion about things, write opinion, uh, and that would be called uh, research. But now it's being more data driven. Um, because first of all, uh, now it's somewhat easier to collect data. Uh, and also uh, analyzing data is also uh, becoming uh, easier because of the advancement tools and techniques. And uh, third, and the most important thing is that uh, the use of technology. Now with the technology, we are able to collect data easily, but also able to collect uh, the kind of data that we wouldn't be able to collect uh, like 30, 40 years back. So more unconventional data is now also accessible. What are the techniques that people use uh, in such research? If you're familiar with statistics, you probably know most of the things. But if you're not, I would like to give a very uh, brief idea about what these techniques are. Well, first one is the survey data analysis, which is quite famous in many other social science research and development uh, economics or development studies. No exception where people go out, do survey, uh, get opinion about from from the uh, people from the area, uh, the un underdeveloped areas, and then do research uh, as to what really uh, improves their life, be it uh, you know their health, employment status, average income, um, yeah, agriculture, climate change, all these things. Um, the research and all these things can well be done by uh, collecting data through surveys. Problem with this is that very difficult to do surveys. Uh, as I said, uh, you can't really do a proper survey unless you send out uh, people to do collect data and qualified people and that's the biggest challenge. Um, so sampling is not being used. So you can't really go out to each and every individual and ask a question, you can use sampling. And that is uh, being used. So that's something um, very well used in survey data analysis in all other kinds of problems, but also in problems in development economics. Then randomized control trial is uh, again, um, is a, a new technique rather new. Well, it has been f used for a long time in medical science and other science in other form of sciences, but not so much in social science. But more recently people uh, have been using a randomized control trial to see whether a given policy will work or not. Uh, it's a more experimental trial where they do something that take uh, an action or you know, implement a policy uh, in a given area in a controlled manner, control as in because you have everything to collect data for, uh, you know, from that particular area. Uh, and one example is that, you know, uh, there's there's an organization called JPAL. It is um, founded by some of the economists from MIT. And what they did was that they went to a village uh, in uh, in India where they provided direct transfer for credit. Um, so that policy was implemented, but locally only in that particular village. And uh, for a period of one year, they tried to collect data and evidence whether the credit transfer is actually improving the health status of uh, young young girls, whether it is improving the education status of uh, kids, all that uh, data was uh, collected and they analyzed and they found out that it is really um, working out. That means the policy is actually working very well. And then they recommended it to the government and government implemented and is implementing now in many other villages, okay? So that's a randomized control trial where you randomly pick a, a sample or subsample, try your policy, see if it works, and if it works, then you sort of use it uh, in all other villages, all other um, areas where you want to uh, implement that policy. Uh, more recently, uh, unconventional modeling techniques have been used, for example, machine learning techniques using very different kind of data something that wasn't available to us a uh, couple of decades back, but with advancement and digital technology, now we have data from social media, from uh, satellites, from 
other forms of data. So there you use uh, more unconventional statistics for prediction purpose. For example, predicting um, some sort of a, a local uh, disease spread, okay, uh, like tropical disease spread uh, using machine learning techniques. Similarly, um, yeah, predicting crime, right? Crime uh, in a given area, say in Africa, in some area is, is a crime prone. So can we predict uh, crime or terrorist attack in such area using machine learning techniques? And that's something being used. It's, it's a new area of research. There's not a lot of success, uh, but surely, you know, it's a promising area and people are uh, doing a lot of work on this. Okay, so unconventional data is now being used, for example, digital data and more big data type of thing where, you know, you collect data for every, every single thing, okay? And that's possible because of the different sources that's being used for data collection with satellite, with uh, social media, for example, even in villages and uh, underdeveloped area, people are now using internet and hence you can collect their data, whether they're making payment, whether they're buying uh, things from uh, online sources, whether they're um, spending time reading out uh, or understand, you know, they're spending time um, in education or not. So all that data can well be collected with very minimum effort because of the digital presence of uh, many people in the uh, underdeveloped uh, countries, underdeveloped areas. Satellite data, uh, it has been used for quite some time now, but uh, again, with more advancement, this is becoming easier. Also from the point of view of, uh, you know, storing data, storing large volume of data and doing analysis in a more efficient manner because of the improvement in the computational technology in the recent times. Some of the organizations which are involved, there are many world-class organizations uh, involved in this, World Bank, uh, uh, International Monetary Fund, World Economic Forum, United Nations, World Health Organizations. They are uh, the international agency. There are many other international agencies and international organizations uh, working on this area. They have researchers, dedicated researchers working on different problems. But apart from that, there are also many um, specialized institutions such as JPAL or Oxfam who are also involved in this. Various universities uh, across Europe or US or Asia, even uh, Africa are uh, doing lots of uh, research on uh, development studies. Um, government think tanks um, in almost all countries, they have think tanks, research centers, doing uh, high quality research on um, on these uh, on these problems. Some of the sample studies, and I've taken this sample study from JPAL, which is a very renowned uh, organization in this particular area. Uh, so here are some of the sample studies. First one is improving learning outcomes through school-based health programs. So if we provide healthcare in the schools, does it improve learning? Um, so that's uh, data driven. So you you know, and they specialize. J Bal specializes in uh, randomized control trial, where you do basically some social experimentation to get data and then analyze it for policy implementation. That's something they are doing, and this is one such program where their views are CD as well. The second one is reducing the cost of lending to low income borrowers. So this is more from a microfinance point of view, uh, financing in the underdeveloped areas where financing is a big issue. And this is one problem, reducing the cost of lending to low income borrower. And what are the ways one can do that? So that's one study they've done. And third one is the using cash transfer to improve child health in low and middle income countries. So will cash transfer, directly transferring cash to people will improve child health care in the low and middle income countries. You know, they've done that study in many countries uh, using data-driven uh, techniques. Okay, um, there are many such things. I highly recommend if you're interested, you can visit the website. I will provide the link in the description, many such studies. Uh, what are the areas where uh, prob you can solve problems? Uh, so, in the development studies, uh, you have problems from a number of areas, be it agriculture, education, health, finance, environment, employment, general well-being, crime, uh, law and order, you name it, right? Uh, there are myriad of uh, possibilities in this sector. 
and uh, it's not related to only economy right only uh, gdp or average income it's also related to health education and other aspects of human life and people are doing research in all other such aspects um there's some recognition to this uh, for long this was uh, not a very uh, prominent academic field but more recently uh, people have got a nobel prize for this doing data driven uh, studies on uh, human development one such example is uh, the 2019 uh, nobel prize in economics uh, which was given to uh, three economists but two of them come from uh, mit and they are also the founders of jpal um so mr abhijit banerji and uh, professor dufflo both were awarded nobel prize in economics for the research in randomized control trial uh, on problems related to uh, development economics uh, they are also closely involved with jpal the organization from where i have taken you know this three sample case studies so you can also learn more about their work they have also written very good books for example uh, one of their book if i remember correctly is poor economics is a wonderful book uh, best seller and it was awarded uh, financial times uh, best economics books uh, i think some i think a couple of years back so that's one very good book you can also read to learn more about their work and how they have used data uh, and statistical techniques to understand human development in in the um in the third world countries or in the poor countries uh for students you can also make career in this field um you know it's not limited to only social science students although social science students are quite suitable for such work but you know if you are a doctor you still can find work you can do research you can be very helpful or useful in this uh, field for a technology professional technology is being used increasingly for the human development specifically in poor countries and this is a wonderful opportunity for you if you want to make a career in this area if you are a lawyer you are an economist you are you, you regardless of your uh, academic discipline you can find uh, you can very well make a career in this particular field um and uh, especially for data scientists those who are you know professional data scientists with a background in computer science statistics or any other scientific discipline uh this is an emerging field and there are many such organization private public um government um and you know even non government organization ngos or international agencies such as world bank and imf they are employing data scientists in uh, yeah in in this uh, area and jpal the organization i talked about they also hire data scientists in india in africa in the us uh, so you can also check their website and if you are interested you can you can apply uh, in this in, in their company 